good. Hello everyone, I'm Peter Desmet. I'm here to present VQ. It's um, a European project, and you might wonder for everybody here in Europe, uh, that is outside of Europe, is this useful to me? I promise something very practical at the end of this presentation. Next slide, please. So, uh, BQ, this project that started in March, it's a new Horizon Europe project with 13 partners, some of which you might recognize, like Pensoft and GBIF, and it is being coordinated by Quinton Groom from the Mesa Botanic Garden in Belgium. Uh, we have mostly European partners, but also South Africa and Australia are included as partners as well. Next slide, please. So, the thing we want to tackle in BQ is that well, for good policy, we need a lot of biodiversity data. A lot is already being collected and also shared through uh, GBIF. Um, but there's still a long way from downloading the data from GBIF and making it useful for policy. And we want to shorten that workflow and also make it uh, repeatable. Next slide, please. And the thing that has been mentioned before also in the previous talk, uh, one way to do that is by creating essential biodiversity variables. Uh, one of them is a species distribution cube, uh, which basically packages occurrence data along three dimensions. So you can say dimension for your taxonomic, so you know per species, you have information per species. Then you have a temporal dimension, you want to know that species, how it evolves over time. And then there's also a spatial dimension, like what is this species doing over time within a certain location. And with each of these dimensions, there comes an extent. So you want to have a certain scope of how, how big you see your cube. Maybe it's just Australia, maybe it's all of Europe. Um, there's a resolution, how precise you want each dimension to be. Maybe year information is enough, or you really want it per day. So you have like trends uh, throughout the, the whole timeline. And there's also an uncertainty associated with every uh, dimension because all of the occurrence data comes with a certain uh, uncertainty. For some, it's very precise data. For some, there's uh, uh, less precise data. And you have to deal with all that type of data um, to be able to package it into two cubes. And within that combination of dimensions, you have a measurement, for example, accounts the number of occurrences for that species for that year within that grid cell. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we uh, named this the species occurrence cube. And you can really think about this as, let's say you have a SQL query and you want to query all occurrences at GBIF. This is currently possible because GBIF offers uh, downloads of uh, their whole occurrence store as parquet files. You can slice and dice that information however you want. So for example, I could say from these occurrences, I want to know the uh, taxon, I want to know the year, and let's have some rough estimate of uh, a grid cell. So I take the latitude and longitude, I round this and I combine this. And I know, oh, Vespa Kravlo in 2020 in grid cell 53 uh, had 15 occurrences, for example. This is the type of thing you can currently already do with the data that GB provides. You can actually run this on your computer. It's not that complicated. Uh, next slide, please. It becomes a bit more complicated if you want to do more spatial processing of your occurrence data. So occurrences are not points. They're actually points with an uncertainty. So you can represent them as, as circles. And then what do you do if you want to assign that point to a grid you're using? And very often, if you want to combine, combine occurrence data with, let's say, environmental data, or you want to report on information, there is a certain grid you want to use. So in Europe, we have the... Um, a European Environmental Agency, which has a grid uh, with squares of one to one, 10 by 10 or 100 by 100 kilometers. But there's also other grids like UTM, the military grid reference system. In South Africa, they use quarter degree grid cells. And you kind of want to assign an occurrence to that grid, but it's not as simple as just saying, well, my occurrence falls within this grid, so it belongs to that grid. Since it comes with an uncertainty, it is also possible that your occurrence overlaps with many grid cells. And one method to assign an occurrence to a grid cell is just randomly. And you basically sprinkle your occurrences your, within that circle and you assign it to a grid cell. There's other methods too. For example, you can assign it to a grid with a coarser resolution. So if it doesn't fall within a one by one completely, you assign it to a 10 by 10. Um, 
Doing that locally on your computer, assigning occurrence to a grid cell is more complicated. Um, next slide, please. And that is why within the cube, we're developing custom SQL functions, basically. The, for example, this is currently a pseudo code. So you say there's a function that I want to load the EEA grid code, and I feed it the latitude, longitude, and the coordinate uncertainty. I want it by 10 kilometers and I assign it randomly. And then what you get, uh, the result is you basically have assigned all of these occurrences to a grid cell and you get a tabular format. And this is a result that you get that uh, can be provided by the software there. Also, if an occurrence, if a combination of the three things like the red line there does not result in any occurrences that would not be included in your uh, cube. So the cube only incur uh, includes presence data. It's not assuming any data. It is really taking all the occurrences and it reducing it to a format that is more manageable. Next slide, please. Another way you can uh, invent a function is, for example, knowing a sampling bias. Uh, so let's say there is a function called count higher, which basically counts for, uh, well, I know that this insect in 2020 had a count of 15,000. And what, that is, what does that mean? Like how many occurrences were counted for the genus in total? And that allows you to have more relative counts and you can kind of uh, uh, include the sampling bias and know, oh, it's just like there was less sampling that year. And you can correct for that by having other functions and you provide these measures in your, uh, in your cube. Next slide, please. So within the project, we want to use these species occurrence cubes. And we have a number of use cases to uh, derive other cubes from those original species occurrence cubes, which are modeled cubes. And those can then be fed into things like indicators um, where you can calculate trends over time. But by providing these species occurrence cubes, all of that becomes a little bit more easy and we want to make it all reproducible as well. Next slide, please. So within B-Cube, we have a number of uh, uh, ideas of ways we want to work. So we want to make it easier to use cloud computing. Uh, we are going to create a lot of tutorials and documentation on really hands-on material, how you can use this. Um, we want to make everything reproducible, which is why we're going to have automated workflows. So you can go from GBF data all the way to an indicator and document it all the way. And you're also able to rerun that process if you want to and basically make that data more aligned with policy. For example, by having these grids that are already used and assigning your data to that grid. Um, we're using a number of case studies to really yeah, use our, the cubes or the ID that we have in this piece of current cubes to really test if this works. And all the products that we're making are going to be fair and open. Next slide, please. So one of the things we're developing since GBIF is a partner is a new download format um, where you are able to just uh, search and filter for occurrences as you currently can. And you can then decide, well, rather than the Darwin Core archive, I want a cube. And you would be able to define your dimension, uh, the output format, and the destination. And it would get metadata and a DOI, just like a normal download. Uh, next slide, please. If you want to play with us on uh, this piece of occurrence cubes, there's a hackathon coming up in Brussels and I all welcome you to join to really test this, uh, this new ID and to combine it with environmental data. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a quick introduction to be cubed. Uh, you can talk to me afterwards if you're interested. Um, there's a whole number of co-authors on this. Um, we're very excited to work on this project. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Are there any questions? Thanks, Peter. That's great. Um, I have two questions. Well, one is, uh, how, how does it, have you thought about how to handle points that are um, centroids in terms of, uh, you know, uh, displaying that type of uncertainty, something that was just mapped to, a, say, a province or a, a county sort of level? If it has an uncertainty, which is then 
as big as the whole extent of the thing it's basically wrapping in it's that is going to work you're just going to assign it to uh, a grid within that circle um, there we might introduce more complicated ways to also look at uh, um, how's the, the well-known text like if you have a shape file use this rather than the the point circle method um, the other thing we can do or we have to decide is what we do if there's no uncertainty provided do we then just assume a default one so we're just slowly going to build up those functions see what works and one of the things another team is doing at imbo is running many 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 versions of the same cube to see this random variability like how it affects the outcome of the cube and like test different methods to see how does that affect the outcome and is it yeah we basically want this random assignment not to be significant to the results afterwards but be very usable data so those are all ideas we're working with cool that makes a lot of sense thank you um my other question is um can you imagine a way to um, augment the input? So, for example, with marine data, you know, one of the starting points is usually take GBIF, take OBIS, join them. Um, something like that possible, do you think? Yeah, I didn't mention this here, but um, these three dimensions you have, we would also allow any dimension. So, for example, you could say, well, I also want to know by sex, I want to have male, female, uh, if that information is available to also split that. Or for example, you have, this is marine data and this is non-marine data, or you want to uh, use depth, for example, and have that as another dimension of your cube. So users will be able to define cubes. And we're again building, like iteratively building and adding more functions. And through be cubed, the, the search and filter is also going to be improved as uh, the Processing of event date, for example, but also, and that is currently lacking in GBF, the possibility to just um, exclude data. So, for example, you say, well, I want all data except machine observations. Uh, so, yeah, we're basically thinking quite broadly, and uh, we want to have a proof of concept very early on and then build upon that. But, yeah, user requests like those from the marine community are very, very welcome. Excellent. Thank you. We have a question online uh, from Jeremy Co. Hi, Peter. It's great to hear this progress. Has B-Cube considered how to incorporate the sampling effort information in the GBIF occurrence data, which varies a lot? Um, so to trickle it down back to the occurrence itself, um, yes, I think that this, um, well, I will have to think about how that works, but we really want to include it in the, in the cubes because the sampling effort is really important for analysis. If sampling effort is already provided with the occurrence, I currently don't think that is standardized in any way. So it's going to be, it's probably possible within a data set to use that information, but it's going to be hard to use that across data sets. Um, but those are all very interesting ideas to, uh, yeah, to, to consider. It's exciting. Um, is, th is there any com uh, compatible tool set out there that would allow you to get, uh, for example, land cover and meteorological data at the same grid and time units for easy then computing onwards? Yes. So uh, I, I don't know about tool set, but yeah, the whole idea is to have, um, so for example, land cover is on a certain grid, for example. Um, what we want to do here is just have your species occurrence data at the same grid, and then you can compare both of them. That is done in other work packages in Bcube. It's not going to be included in the download service. The download service, the scope is just packaging your occurrence data in an uh, easy format that is more analysis ready. Is this only occurrence data or event core also is in plan? Or? So currently, GB flattens uh, event core information to occurrence data. So yeah, it is about occurrences, but the, the whole GB model takes into account uh, event core information as well and assigns that to occurrences. So it is included because G the GB model flattens event information already. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you.